Sony ZV E10 is sold out everywhere, and they stopped producing it due to the chip shortage. But what if you just can't wait to have a camera? You've come to the right place. In this video, I want to share with you some Sony ZV E10 alternatives. So while you are waiting for the ZV E10 to be in stock again, you can consider some other options. The cameras I'm going to cover today include Canon M50 Mark II, Canon M6 Mark II, and Fujifilm X-S10. I will talk about their specs, their pros and cons, and I will tell you why you should or should not get a camera depending on what you use it for. Now let's get started. These four cameras are pretty similar in size and weight, with the Canon M6 Mark II being a little heavier, but it also has a higher resolution, so it will perform better, especially in low light environments. It will have more dynamic range, which means the image will have more detail in highlight and shadow areas. Now let's take a look at the screens. All of the cameras have an articulated multi-angle screen, except for M6. It has a flip-up screen, so if you attach a microphone on it, it will block the screen. But there is one thing I want to remind you. With Sony zv 10 I won't say it is the real touch screen. You can use your hands to point at the area you want to focus on and you can swipe to see the different areas of a photo that you have taken. But that's it. You cannot use the touch screen to change the settings. Let me tell you why this can be a problem. If you are shooting yourself, you will have to use the multi-angle screen. And after you put your camera in position, if you want to change the settings again, you will have to move to the other side of the camera. Otherwise, you can't see the buttons. And that's why you might want a real touch screen that allows you to change the settings on the screen. But of course, you can solve this problem by using your phone to remotely control your camera. Next, video format. Everything is pretty clear in this form, so I'm not going to read them out one by one, but I do want to point out some important deciding factors. Among all these cameras, zv 10 is the only one that doesn't have a record limit. It means that with other cameras, you will have to press the record button again when 30 minutes up. Well, this might probably not be important if you only shoot videos for a couple of minutes. But let's say if you are shooting sports events, it's very likely to be more than 30 minutes long and you probably don't want to miss any single second. Another thing I want to mention is that even though all of the cameras on this list can film 4K, it isn't the real 4K with M50 because the footage will be cropped a lot and the autofocus doesn't seem to work well with 4K, so the videos will be unusable. It probably isn't a big deal because a lot of devices only support HD and it will also be more difficult to edit 4K videos. But I think it might be a deal breaker for some people, so it's just one thing you should keep in mind. The next thing is also a very important deciding factor, in-body stabilization. Fujifilm X-S10 has great in-body stabilization, while the others only have digital stabilization. The steady shot with zv 10 will have a bigger crop than M50 and M6, but you can choose not to use steady shot with zv 10 instead use the Catalyst Pro software. It is very powerful, 
but it takes longer to render videos and you can only process one video at a time so I think it bothers me a little Next, let's take a look at some other features or drawbacks that I haven't covered With Sony ZV-E10 and Canon M50, you can shoot vertical videos so it will be more convenient for Instagram stories, TikTok videos, or YouTube shorts. Sony ZV-E10 also features the product showcase mode. It will focus on the product as you move it near to your camera, and then refocus on your face when you move it away. All of the cameras on this list can do live streaming, but it's easier with ZV-E10 because you don't have to download any special software. Sony ZV-E10 has a headphone port to allow you to monitor your audio. You can do that with other cameras too, but you will have to use an adapter. One thing I hear people complain about Sony ZV-E10 is that it doesn't have a viewfinder. So under bright sunlight, you might have trouble seeing your screen. But I don't think it's a big problem for me. Sometimes I just use my hand to block the sunlight. And I think you probably won't take photos or videos when the sun is really, really bright anyway. Now, for Canon M50 and M6, one huge problem is that Canon doesn't invest much in APS-C lenses, so you won't have as much options as you do with Sony cameras. Of course, you can buy an adapter and use the Canon full-frame lenses, but that will cost you more. Now, let's talk about Fujifilm X-S10. It has a significantly bigger grip so if you have bigger hands or if you use bigger lenses it will be easier to hold a camera finally let's talk about price all the cameras on this list are under 1000 us dollars at the time i made this video with fujifilm xs10 being the most expensive one now before i make a conclusion i just want to say they are all great cameras the most important thing is which one fits your need. So if you look at the price and all the pros and cons, I would say if budget is a problem and you only use the camera for photography, then Canon M50 is definitely good enough. But if you shoot both photos and videos, or mostly videos, then I will rule out the Canon M50 because it doesn't have real 4K and the lens options are limited. As for Sony ZV-E10 and Canon M6, I think I have to say you can get more value out of ZV-E10. Even though it has a smaller sensor, it's actually good enough most of the time, you can't tell the difference. So now we only have two options, Sony ZV-E10 and Fujifilm X-S10. I think it really depends on what kind of functions you need. For example, if you mostly use the camera for YouTube videos in your studio and you always put it on a tripod, then you certainly don't need the in-body stabilization. Or if you often shoot videos longer than 30 minutes, then I would recommend Sony ZV-E10. But if stabilization is a big deal for you and you have a higher budget, then you should definitely get Fujifilm X-S10. Alright, I hope this video helps you decide which camera is the one that you need. All the product links are in the description box down below. If you like my videos, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I talk about cameras and lenses and anything related to photography or videography. 
If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Bye!